All right, so um, good to see you guys here today. Marcos, Christian, Simon, um, Ash. So how did it go yesterday? You guys had a chance to, I saw that Simon and Marcos had a chance to uh, sort of do some refinement on their concepts. Simon, I gave you some fear. Simon, Marcos, I both gave you feedback on stuff you sent to me the other day. Um, how do you feel about it? Like, how do you feel about where, was that enough for you to go off of? All right, cool. Cool. And Simon, you sent an update today, and you're trying to decide what size of pinchers you're going on. Um, honestly, I think the, uh, I think my eye is going to the sort of fatter, squattier, um, pinchers. This is feeling, I don't know, it, wa it washes too much out into this. But, um, good progress, dude. I mean, it's, it's starting to come together. Yeah, I mean, my, my favorite is this, from what I'm saying. And Ash and Christian, if you guys have any updates, post them, and I'll give you feedback right away. I'll try and get that to you within 24 hours. Yeah, you know, uh, this feels just too much like this, right? That makes it sort of all monotone, if that makes sense. It makes it too uniform. Um, this is a nice contrast. It sort of calls attention to the center. And Marcos, dig the sketch. Really dig what you did here in the head. This is nice. And I like the concept overall. It definitely has that uh, that Final Fantasy feel. You know, see a little bit of Garuda in there. You know, I can see, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I see it. I see the influences. It's good stuff. So today, 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 today. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be doing sort of a self-critique, self-edit of the progress we've made so far and of our concept. Um, so let me jump over here. Uh, we're going to take a look at, at what we have and sort of re-examine what we're doing. Then uh, we're going to sculpt in our edits, or I'm going to sculpt in my edits on this guy. And then we're going to start accessorizing and figure out sort of what makes sense for uh, accessories for these guys. Um, then we'll do an atmospheric paint and uh, just kind of block out a very, very simple paint job so we can see what we're playing with um, when we have this thing up to scale and how it's going to read. So um, from there, we'll turn off the paint and then we'll jump into detail. That'll be in probably, if we might, might be able to get to it today, we'll see. Um, but if not, we'll get to it next week. And, uh, and then we'll do like a quick preview under today and just see how things are, how things are looking and see how we can set up our render inside of ZBrush um, to sort of match the scale, playing with perspective, um, throwing some filter effects on there so that we can we can kind of get a feel for how this is going to be inside of the game. So with that being said, I've been staring at this thing and I'm like, I brought the legs out yesterday and they were in a little too close to the body. I felt like it just didn't make sense. Um, it was just too shrimp-like, too too flat. And I know I do have the shrimp legs in here, but I don't want it to read as a shrimp. This guy is not a shrimp, right? Maybe he's a gargantuan uh, shell monster, gargantuan mollusk monster. So um, first things first, just going to focus on silhouette for a moment and see how it reads. Because right now something feels broken, and I'm not really sure what it is. 
Let's go to the outline thin shader. And I think it might be in the neck. Something here is not feeling right. I think I'm okay with the tail. And this, um, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys, I know Simon, you've used this material um, to preview your silhouette. Uh, but I don't know how many, like Ash, if you used it, or Christian, you've used it a whole lot, but it really helps you sort things out. Especially, I mean, you've, you end up, you know, it's kind of like people look at their silhouette, they start with the silhouette, uh, you know, out of, a, out of a thumbnail or a block out, and then they start creating and modeling and sculpting it, um, and often it's not revisited, right? But a lot of the changes that we make along the way as far as surface detail, it can change the way our silhouette reads, and it needs to be readjusted to make sure that it's you know still reading well. You may have started with something that looked good, and after a while, working the surface, it may fall out of shape, or may fall flat, or the read um, may be lost. So I'm looking at this, and I'm going, OK, I'm seeing something in the neck where this feels like it needs to come down, because he's feeling very thinned out. There might be something here in the head that I need to bring out to sort of complete this shape. This whole area is sort of sort of dead. This is super busy. This is super dead. And I feel like this should be drawing the eye more, and this is drawing my eye more in this area. So I want to look at the head after I take it out of this material. From the front, I turn it upside down. It looks like <laughs> it looks like a Rorschach test. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm okay with what's going on in the front. There's something in here that I might need to adjust. So what I'm looking for, when I'm looking at it at this point, but I'm I'm looking for uh, a read. I'm trying to see what features are reading, what features are getting lost, is what's getting lost, what I want to get lost. You know, in other words, I say get lost, I mean de-emphasized, right? So I want to make sure that anything I want emphasized is reading well, and, and it's the, in the primary read. And anything that I want de-emphasized from a given perspective or point of view is being de-emphasized. Right now, I think I read the head clearly, but once again, I'm just looking at the overall shape. I need something here. I'm going to repeat that. Um, this definitely needs some love. It needs to be worked out as to what that is. I still haven't really decided what I'm doing there. And as I rotate to a three-quarter, this is looking okay. These shrimp legs need to be um, integrated a little bit better. But it's important while you go through this process that um, you know you you constantly switch your vision from overall down to components, right? Look at the individual component. How interesting is that? Because you know it's, I keep on on saying this week is all about talking about scale and how do we um, how do we interpret the scale since we're doing such large creatures. These are gargantuan creatures. I mean, if you look at this from our player's view, I have to make sure that there's something everywhere. And I keep on repeating that, but I can't repeat it enough. Um, so I think probably, if I'm looking at it from here, I need to flush out some of these things that I had started, like the egg sack, right? I'd also talked about doing um, minions. That came up. But I think the minions we'll get to next week. All right, so back over to basic material. Actually, after making this adjustment, I like it a lot. 
in the front here, I'm going to go ahead and do a morph target. Let's stay, put that there. And I'm going to start by maybe bringing these out more. as like giant tusks. And I think maybe that will start to help it even out some more. While I like the shape of these claws, they don't make a lot of sense. So I'm going to adjust those and see how it affects my larger silhouette since I am working on the front. I'm trying to resolve some issues here. Let's take that and rotate them in a little bit. Like that. Instead of making these claws, which is what I was originally going to do, I think I'm going to play off the mollusk shell theme and make these more of a shell-like element or something more like that. And while this is still looking rough and cruddy, it doesn't really matter. I'm looking at just the silhouette. Let's bounce back over here and see how that looks in outline thin. So that's reading a bit better. And I think I lost my morph target when I remeshed. So no worries. I could use layers too, but I won't be able to remesh. But I still have other ideas I want to try out. I don't want to just stick to this one idea. So I am going to um, store morph target again. This time I won't <laughs> uh, I won't uh, remesh and destroy my morph target. So my other idea was to pull some sort of element up here. But I'm not sure if I'm digging that. It's kind of feeling like a pompadour. makes it feel very kaiju-like. Let's take that down. I'm going to go ahead and totally like a Hercules beetle. Um, you know, Marcos, I was thinking about giving it wings, but I, I'm i not going to give it wings. I'm going to give it something that kind of mimics wings. Let's see how that works. Reduced. Hmm. That's broken. I think maybe just a little bit like that is good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remesh that. And then um, let's get over here to the back. Let me figure out what I'm doing here. Now the idea was, let me go over the browser. Is 
That's not what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Was to go for some sort of like this mollusk, mollusk shell, shell shape. And that was sort of the concept for the, uh, the creature. So playing off of that, I think it would make sense to take all of this back here. Just pull this together into part of what would be um, a foot, like a like a snail foot or slug foot that's kind of trailing off the back. So I'm just going to merge these all together. Let's pinch that together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the entire bottom portion of this creature and make him um, soft bodied with some sort of leathery part so he doesn't feel completely vulnerable. And then the top portion and along the outside of the arms, I'm going to do sort of shell plating so that the design makes sense. And then the same thing in the head, we're going to have shell plating, and then I'm going to do a, probably a little secondary head inside of here, open this up, and start to develop that. Now, don't get married to your creature just yet. right? I'm, I'm looking at mine, and I'm going, OK, I got an idea. This is my first draft of my idea. right? Um, Simon has done a hundred drafts of this idea. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, most of you guys are all on your first or second draft of your of your idea that you decided to run with, and you need to be flexible enough to go: Is this the best I can do? Is this making sense? You should be at this point before we commit to it, before we go into full production. You want to make sure that your idea is sound, that you have. Um, a good idea of what you're doing, um, and that it's cool. You know that it's it's worth investing um, the weeks that you're going to invest in this um, to make a, a giant creature. It's, I mean, it's a huge investment in time to get this into a game engine. Right? It's no small feat. So um, you just want to you want to be really sure. That uh, that it's where you want to go, so that you have that drive to push you to completion. You have the inspiration to go. Yes, this is badass. I feel good about it. I don't. There's nothing I want to second guess. I've already gone through that process of of reassessing. So that being said, I'm going to uh, try and refine this some more and run with that shell concept. I'm going to go ahead and sculpt out a very simple shell. 